Welcome back guys to another video and I hope everybody is safe. In today's video let's tackle the upgrade from my Ryzen 7 2700 CPU to the mighty 3700X which on paper is the replacement for this one because also it says it's a 65 watt TDP one but in real life the third gen uh, Ryzen CPU is more like Intel they publish the TDP for the base frequency and then in turbo mode or EXFR or Precision Boost Overdrive or AMD goes much more than that so in stock form it's kind of hard to cool on air in the 10A4 case and this would be a two-part series today we will tackle the air cooling on the Noctua L9A and then part two we will have the Assetec 92mm all-in-one cooler so let's begin My favorite CPUs from the AMD Ryzen series are the 1700 and the 2700 because they are almost the same and they strike the perfect balance of performance and efficiency, for my needs at least. This makes them perfect for the Dan A4 case because you can easily cool them with an Octua L9A for example because they respect that 65 watt TDP as advertised for AMD. I am only mentioning this specifically since some viewers in the comments said that what's all the fuss with this cooling for the 3700X since it has on paper the same 65 watts TDP. Well that's why I'm doing this video. Now the 3700X is a different animal, it's a much more powerful CPU when compared to its brothers but also much hotter out of the box. I'm not going into too much specs regarding the 3700X since we all know how advanced the 3rd gen Ryzen series is. Ok, here is a quick proof from Tech Power Up and then we will jump straight into my video. So this is the CPU out of the box, plug and play. We notice that there is a 24 degrees difference from the 2700 to the 3700X stock versus stock. And that's on a Noctua U12 which is a single tower 120mm heatsink. So who knows what will happen in the Dan A4 with the Noctua L9A. So now let's test it in my computer. The 3700X I got is brand new so it's not a review sample. I am using the exact same specs I had so far and I will link everything in the description as well. The only obvious upgrade comes from the case itself, I switched to the new V4.1 variant that has the new riser cable for the 4.0 PCI Express lane but that's for another video. Ok here is the baseline with the 2700 in stock form on the L9A. So we didn't go above 65-66 degrees at 19 degrees ambient room temperature and the overall noise as you can hear is really good. And then in Cinebench R20 we got 3113 points and we didn't go over 63 degrees. With the baseline out of the way here is the 3700X in stock form, just plug and play with the second to last BIOS on the ASUS Trix B4050i motherboard with the same Noctua L9A fan with again the fan set on the standard RPM profile from the BIOS and the RAM are set to their DOCP profile. Here is a run in R20 in real time and as you can see very quickly we hit a thermal limit of 95 degrees Celsius just before we finish the test. And as you can pretty much tell that fan is at 100% and the noise it makes, well, it is loud. Next up is a stress test in ADA64 which gives us the same thermal results as in R20 and I only let it run for 1 minute since I think I've made my point. So the 2700 in stock form in the Dan A4 with the L9A at 18 to 19 degrees C ambient temperature we get 66 degrees in a full load stress test but when we put the 3700X in the same circumstances we get a whopping 94 degrees C. That's a massive 28 degrees difference in temperature despite the fact that both are stated at 65 watts TDP. 
So I hope now that's very clear what I'm trying to say that the 3700X, yes, in stock form, it's very powerful, but it comes with a high temperature penalty. I mean, okay, all of these are stress tests, you might say, but what about a gaming scenario? Well, even there, it struggles to maintain a decent temperature. Here is a benchmark run in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and as you can see, the temps are in the mid 70s as an average, and there is plenty of noise from the fan. It even went above 80 degrees in some moment. So my conclusion is very simple. The 3700X in stock form is nowhere near viable on the L9A in the Dan A4 with this motherboard and BIOS. Before we move on, I also tried the Echo mode that comes standard with any 3rd gen Ryzen CPU. For this to work, you need to go into your BIOS and make sure that you have PBO2 enabled. Then go back into your desktop, download Ryzen Master and then the Echo mode will appear in the menu under Custom Profiles. If you don't do this, then you will not have the Echo mode in the app. So I tried this as well and have discovered it doesn't do much, it just limits the overall frequency by 200-300 MHz and very little changes to the voltage. So it's still hot as hell due to aggressiveness and how it turbos the frequency. Maybe on an X570 board will work better or maybe with a improved BIOS, but at this point these are way too many ifs for me to further pursue this eco mode. Ok, now what? Well, until I put the Asset X645 LT, which is the only 92mm AIO that fits this case, also I did separate reviews for it when it came out, so please check them out as well. Let's further investigate the 3700X and see if we can tame it on air. As a side note, I don't consider myself an enthusiast overclocker, I'm more on the practical side like I prefer decent performance as long as I can cool it and keep it quiet. Since the Dan A4 is such a niche by itself, with this on top, well, it's all about perspective. But in the end, I can't believe I did it, guys. I started in increments and tested it out, but in the end I found a sweet spot. I set the core ratio for 40, which means 4 GHz on all cores, and set the voltage on manual mode for 1.075 volts, which is a big difference from the 1.4 to 1.5 volts we see in stock form. The OCP is still on of course, and I haven't touched PBO or any other settings. And let's see what happens. In R20 we get 4512 points, which is only a 2% drop from the 4613 we got in stock form. But we go down from 95 degrees Celsius to 74 degrees. That's a huge 21 degree difference, aka 28% better. I would gladly lose that performance, even 5-10% to 10 if that means I will get these better temperature numbers. Of course noise output goes down as well. Then we have the same scenario in ADA64 where it doesn't go over 77 degrees. Of course then in gaming everything is really good as well. In here our average drops from the mid 70s in stock form to mid 50s. So yeah, let's conclude once more. If you have the same board as me and you want to use the 3700X on air, more specifically the Noctua L9A in the Dan A4, you must get creative and tinker with it and limit that voltage because it's so aggressive from the factory. I mean for me 4 GHz on all cords and threads is just amazing. It's a big upgrade from my stock 2700 in performance and at the same time I can keep it cool and quiet. And of course I can't wait to put the asset tech back in and see even better numbers. So there you have it guys. 
let me know down in the comments what other tweaks have you done to your CPU so you can tame it in the A4. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Stay safe, Alex out.